Welcome back, guys, to Friday Facts number 406 with me, Massive Dynamic, and we're here this week with Nuke Penguin. Say hello, Nuke. Hello, everyone. I'm Nuke Penguin. Yeah, there's Nuke Penguin. He's here to give us some, because I am not a speculator, guys. I, I just, uh, I'm not smart enough to speculate on stuff, but Nuke Penguin, he is pretty slick, and he's made some, uh, some kind of speculations in our Discord. And he's been correct a lot of the time, so I thought it would be nice to have him here along with us to um, give, a, give a second think on things. And uh, so anyway, this one, this one here, number 406, is all about music. Now, neither Nuke nor I are like big music guys as far as like knowledgeable about music, but we both do enjoy factorial music very much. So we're kind of excited about this one, so let's get right into it. Uh, we'll start off with the introduction, and so they've introduced a new composer for Factorio 2.0, and they said they started working with them in November of 2021, and the guy's name is Peter, I'm going to say Weiser. I don't know how to speak Czech, so that's my best guess. Uh, he's a Czech composer. You can read all of his bio uh, if you click on the link there um, connected to his name. And uh, apparently he's a pretty, pretty capable guy. So um, the subheadings here, orchestral music, uh, let us know that they've gone with uh, kind of a different feel for the new soundtrack on Factorio 2.0. And it's going to be actually live orchestra music. So that is a pretty cool thing. I, I do love a live orchestra myself. And uh, I'm sure all of you guys uh, like that kind of thing. Um, but uh, they talk about the recording sessions and uh, how the, that whole experience was. And I'm sure that was really exciting. So here's a, a bit of a slideshow here of uh, some of the recording sessions. I'm going to go through them now. Now, if you can read music, then you can take a look at this. Maybe you can tell what Space O2 is going to sound like. Um, me, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's just a bunch of squiggles. Uh, but here are the slideshow. A few pictures of the orchestra. Looks like they had a good time anyway. They have a lot of in individuals involved in this. Yeah, what was it? 174 people. 174, yeah. 174 people involved in it. That's a lot. A lot of work. No, nothing like the uh, the original um, small studio that the Whoops started out to be. Uh, that's that's really a lot. Um, so next, they talk about the current soundtrack, uh, which was done by Daniel James Taylor. That is going to be the novice soundtrack. So the soundtrack that we all know and love for Factorio. 1.0 will continue to be with us as the novice soundtrack. So nothing will change there. I'm kind of um, glad about that. Yeah, I am uh, too. I would, I would like a new, maybe a new song for for novice though, if they can fit it in. Yeah, well, they do say that there's eight hours at the at the very end, and I know I'm skipping ahead, but at the very end they do say that they have eight hours of soundtrack altogether. So maybe they do squeeze a little something in uh, extra to novice to give us some, some extra something to look forward to. Yeah, I would think that would that probably would fit. Um, so there's a few things that they say in here that uh, kind of struck uh, both me and New Penguin. Um, the uh, right here under current soundtrack will stay as novice soundtrack. In the second paragraph, it says in general. What the soundtrack tries to do is to accompany the player throughout all the mental processes required by the game to focus the attention at the time of designing the factories and its logistics. So the music should create a balanced and relaxed atmosphere to allow the player to concentrate. The music is not decoration. It helps the player to have a better immersive experience and to visualize what is not shown on the screen. And I think that's true. Yeah, I think they really captured that in 1.0 and I'm and I'm confident that they will in 2.0 also. Factory um, music definitely helps with my immersiveness. Yeah, it definitely I can't play without sound or the music off. 
Yeah, I agree. It feels like I'm disconnected from the game when I play with the sound off. Yeah, I agree. It definitely sets you in that kind of lonely, um, kind of crash landing kind of kind of mindset. Just you and the biters. Yeah, really. And you're um, not welcome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It definitely makes you feel like you don't belong here. Here's a paragraph that I like, factorial engine constraints. And um, it talks about how the game doesn't know um, what music should be played next. The music is not cued by the action of the player. So the score has to be kind of a neutral um, score that just, that just simply sets the tone for your gameplay and doesn't, it doesn't like unexpectedly rise and fall to the point where if you're in battle and suddenly the music is real calm or just the opposite, if you're just building, um, building belts and then suddenly the music has this big crescendo and it's like real exciting that it just would, would knock you right out of the immersion. The, the game is set in, in space as we all know, and it's nice to be just kind of suspended in that kind of atmosphere of the music and be able to play the game with the sound effects kind of helping to set the mood um, with the music in the background. I think they did a really good job with that all in all. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, firstly, I, think I want to say there's no atmosphere in space. <laughs> True, but, but I do think they do a pretty good job at <laughs> capturing the moment. Yeah, I, I meant atmosphere in more of a philosophical sense than a oh yeah, right breathing the air sense. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, I think that covers that. Um. Okay. Next, they talk about the four new planets, uh, plus space. So five unique soundscapes. And every planet will have its own soundtrack, and including the um, space platforms. So let's start off with space. I'm going to go ahead and play this one minute and 26 second clip that they've included here. So let's, let's watch and listen to that. Oh, I didn't even notice the nuclear power plant there. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw there was a few steam turbines. There's the missiles. So we have a new weapon apparently, there's missile launchers. I saw that coming. Things seem to repair themselves pretty quickly there. Yeah, and then missiles don't seem to be quite powerful enough to take care of those big rocks. From the looks of it, it looks like the missile turret can't target a giant asteroid, which is counterintuitive. I predicted that there would be missile turrets that shoot down asteroids. But I guess they don't work on the big ones. Apparently not. Or maybe they just didn't have enough firepower there. But I think that sounded pretty good. It sounded very um, kind of Space 1999, if, you're, if you remember that show from long ago. Okay, next we have Vul Vulcanus. They talk about how on Vulcanus they used a lot of brass instruments. And I think they did a really good job with this one. Let's watch this one. This is a minute and 32 seconds on Vulcanus.
almost reminiscent of like Star Trek episode. It is. It's got to be because of the brass and the wondrous. I just noticed there was an artillery wagon on my train. Hmm. I didn't notice that the it's first time I watched that. Yeah, I didn't notice that either. Is it by really fast? I think this is the planet where where Anakin becomes Darth Vader. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Interesting. So maybe there's some enemies on Vulcanus that we don't know about yet. Yep. Apparently there are. So we've got a artillery wagon. Yeah, I would hope. Me too. All right. Well, that's cool. I honestly hope there's enemies on every planet. Me too. I'm sure. There I think are. on Vulcanus that they'll be triggered by seismic pollution rather than pollution. Ah. Ah. Good one. Okay, let's see what we can pick up from Fulgore. Now, I, what'd you think of that music on uh, Vulcanus? I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. I, I liked it. I liked it a it lot. It was really good. Okay. It, it did seem a little bit Star Wars. Uh, uh, what's the word? Sci-fi? Yeah, sci-fi. Yeah. Sci uh, Star Wars inspired. Yeah. I agree. All right, let's check out um, Bulgura. Let's see how they did there. And this one here, oh yeah, they, uh, they wanted it to sound kind of electrical, kind of uh, electronical, electricity. Um, oh yeah, this one's really cool. Yeah, so let's check this one out. high-tech sounding soundtrack it is i have a couple of questions about this one one why so many robot boards mm. and also why so many rocket side that is what i said that they were they went pretty overkill with those robot ports look at all the robot i think they have a bunch of logistic chests on those rocket silo they, do, they have them there too it's like there's no belts. I don't see any belts on these planes. Oh wait, there they are. I do see belts. Never mind. I think that... I think that maybe the... The bots... Might have a bonus. You know what I just noticed there? That was odd. I have a bonus. What? Look at I'm gonna rewind it just a little bit. Look at the um the train engines in the Can you say what time stamp it is? Uh yeah, I'm coming okay, it's at like one fourteen. The train engines in the station have um loaders and unloaders. Um that is by that I mean that there are inserters loading fuel and also unloading would they unload fuel I oh know. i know what that is what's that about it's that's because they want to get rid of not the best fuel they can take out inadequate fuel i see that they're putting nuclear fuel in right now oh, okay. they must have emptied out lesser fuel Oh, okay. So they're using it to improve the fuel. But I don't think you can currently do that with inserters, but that makes sense. Yeah, you can't do that with inserters currently. That I've tried it, and it doesn't seem to work. Uh, I was um, on Fulgora, they might have like a 
some sort of bot bonus that makes it beneficial to use bots. Ah, good thought. Either they can recharge with electricity or they can recharge in the zone of the lightning rod or there has to be a reason why this person has overdone it with robo ports. Like why would they favor that over belts? Hmm. Ah, good, good question. I didn't think about that. Okay, so now they talk about, um, oh, I'm sorry. I said eight hours of soundtrack. They said five hours of soundtrack um, here. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I, see, I see where you got the eight from the eight minute. Does it say eight somewhere? There's an eight minute uh, soundtrack at the end that's the final two planets. They don't have any visuals for it because they haven't revealed them yet. Okay, right. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Um, this is this eight minutes of um, sound here. I'm going to play it in the background while we kind of finish out our little review here. So the first time I listened to this, I thought I heard water swishing. Maybe, maybe not so much. I could have sworn I heard like water waves crashing. Like one of the planets might be watery. But uh, the end of it all is that there's over five hours of soundtrack altogether. One hour per planet. Um, and they, they've got sort of the recording finished I think is what they're trying to say here uh, but they're still in editing phase so they're adjusting the music to the game and the game to the music maybe uh, in a few different ways to make everything kind of sync up in a way that's going to be very pleasant I think um, you know what else I noticed oh there it is what is it I was going to say the rocket wasn't showing up on my screen to, to launch back to the top but it's there now because I have it in full screen mode, I think. But anyway, right. that's besides the point. Yep. Gotta love the rocket. No. I think that they they have not finished. I don't think they've finished the sound. They said they have to they have to play five hours of soundtrack. Oh yeah, they say yeah. We don't yet have the final mixes. Um, they have the demos, and the recordings. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, a lot of editing. I think that's that's true. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of editing left to do. But I think all in all, what we see here is really impressive. I think they've done a great job with it. Um, I think it's this eight-man track is really nice. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine what kind of planet this would be. I think a jungle, some sort of green jungle. It sounds lush. Yeah, definitely lush. It sounds kind of vibrant. Yeah, vibrant is a good word. Like maybe there's like a lot of life on one of these planets. If I wonder any... if we'll see biters on other planets. Hopefully there's not just all biters. Yeah, that would feel kind of stale if there was. Yeah, I think that would be stale. I think there should be different different types of uh, enemies on the different planets. But we'll have to wait and see about that. That was, that was cool to see the artillery wagon on. Yes. I was concerned there wouldn't be any military targets. I would like to see 
something swimming in the oil muck. Oh, yeah. Or something that can come out of the, that heavy oil sand. Some sort of serpent thing. Maybe a lava monster? Yeah, a lava on monster Vulcanus. on Vulcanus. This is where we saw the uh, artillery wagon. No, that was Vulcan. It's on Fulgora. Let's see. I'm going to just review it one more time. Yeah, I don't think I saw any. I'm even looking for turrets. I don't see any turrets. I don't think I see any military. I guess the enemy that we know is is the lightning, which is more of a blessing than an enemy. Yeah, because you saw the big um, uh, energy. What do you call it? Um, Did you notice how fast the bots are on Fulgora? They seem like they're maybe they have just a lot of upgrades. Yeah, they were very fast. They might have a bonus in, for for movement or or passive recharging. Could be. They did seem very fast because at first I didn't even notice them. They went by so fast, but then when I I kind of watched it two or three times, I started to see them fly by. Because I was thinking, there's an awful lot of robots for not being or roboports for not being so many robots. But then I started to see them. After that, also, no, surely that's not sushi. Another factor is the varying items that you get from scrap. It'd be hard to predict what you need to put on the belt, so bots make that simplified. Right. Just right. having the cluster chests everywhere to put it. Where it needs to go. Right, I almost forgot about that when I was looking at Fulgur. I was thinking, why is there so much sushi? But that's right, I forgot about the scrap thing. Yeah. Mm, another question is are these rockets just payload rockets to be sending to a platform? Yeah, that, that's an awful lot of rockets. They have to have some purpose. Um, yeah, I have no idea. It would be inefficient if they were just getting 10 science packs for a rocket. I don't think they're for science packs. Or they're probably for space in space science packs. I like their rainbow colors. Yeah, I'm curious about the lighting. If that's, if that's something that's built into the new silo, or if that's... Um, something that's, that those are light lamps. Those are the electric lamps. lamps that they wired up that way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do see the connections to them now. I didn't see the uh, the circuit network connections on them until I looked a little bit closer. But I see them now. Okay, it's aesthetically pleasing. It is. I think they did a good job there. That is a lot of silos, and I'm glad to see the Spidertron on Fulgora because. Um, that means that, I think that means that they've moved the Spidertron, um, do I want to say up or down in the uh, tech tree? Um, hmm. Well, they probably moved it up because you can't get it on novice. Right. But time-wise, it could be about the same or even better. You can't get it on Nova. Now, there's a there's a question for you. you. Can't get it on Novus, or because it's you need fish to make. Spider what I mean Trump. is, you can't unlock it on Novus. Okay. They've mentioned in a previous. Oh, they did mention that. Yeah, they did. Does that mean you have to export fish from Novus to other planets or... to make the Spider Tron? 
or there's fish on the lush planet. Okay. Hmm, but there's that no... eight minutes. That eight minute soundtrack. That sounded like a for one single planet. Yeah, I agree. It did sound like one planet to me too. Um, let's see. They say. Listen to this track and imagine a remote and unexplored, a remote and unexplored planet full of, yeah, I think they're saying full of life because it sounds like there's a lot of life there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's my, that's my. Full own. life, lushness, and wonder. Wonder. Yeah, I wonder what's going to be there. I think that might be my favorite one on this FFF. Even though there, there's no visuals. They'll probably reveal that planet in the next FFF. Yeah, we can hope. We can hope that, the, yeah, they've definitely set the stage for some more exciting news, I think. I think people are expecting it very soon. Yeah, I think some of us are starting to lose patience. I'm talking to you, Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's all I have. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? No. Nuke? I don't really know. I don't think so. Um, I'll save my... I'll save the rest of my speculations for hopefully this next FFF, which I think is going to be the lush green planet. Okay. We've seen pictures. We've seen pictures of it. It's it's a green and pink. All right. So there you have it, guys. That'll do it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Nuke Penguin it was great to have you here. I hope you'll join me again yeah. next week. I will do my best. It was, yeah, it was nice being here. All right. I look forward to it. All right. That sounds good. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've got a, a lot of exciting news this week, and uh, if Nuked is right, then we're going to be talking about a new planet next week. Let's all hope that's the truth, and maybe they'll start to reveal some of those new enemies. Um, mm, your fingers. Until then, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Yeah.